Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain FDKs. Let us begin. And as we talk about FDKs, I need to talk about the three points that make up an FDK in Yu-Gi-Oh! FDK in Yu-Gi-Oh, my fellow students, stands for First Turn Kill. So, what makes an FDK are three things. One, the play starter. Two, the offense enabler. And three, the resource loop. I'm now going to go through these three key things that you need to know in order to create an FDK. And I want to showcase this is by saying is that when you understand an FDK, then you can understand how to beat it and what measures it takes to create it in the first place. With that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. So let's break it down. The first thing you, will, you encounter when an FDK is about to take place is one, the play starter. What is a play starter in FDK? A play starter is usually a card or a series of actions in that game by registered by you or your opponent that result in a sort of play that either does A, abuses a card that you have that isn't a once per turn, B, induces a situation where you produce effects which are cheating cards through a cheat system in the way you're playing them. When nothing ruins the game plan. So for example, you will have cards that cheat away things that in normal play, you wouldn't be able to do this. So one of the best examples is the hex cards, the hex series in Yu-Gi-Oh, where these are the rock hex just for earth, dark hex just for making light fusions, and light hex which is making light fusions. And that when you use the hex, for and tribute it with another card, you can just pump out any earth fusion in the game. This is an example of a play starter that is that would be considered part of an FTK, right? But for purposes of uh, the example of this, th this this video, obviously play starter, the hex is a typical example of what I would call a play starter in an FTK. Anyways, the main example of it is just essentially it breaks down to a series of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that, that cheat out the activation conditions of cards that usually aren't supposed to be cheated out in the first place and that usually have restrictions there under normal playing circumstances. This is what play starts as FTKs usually amount to. And I think that covers what a play starter is in FTKs for the most part. As I said... Summarizing it all, it's usually a card like the Light Hex, the Earth Hex, or the Dark Hex. Such sorts of cards that cheat out systems. So essentially, these are cards that cheat uh, cards out through cheat mechanics. Let's move on. And we come to our second point, which is to Offense Enabler. Now, when it comes to your FTK, once you've done your play starter which we've explained in the first part your offense enabler is the card that's going to change the the dynamic of how you're going to implement that fdk so the offense could be is it going to be a burn strategy either using a burn card like a cannon cannon soldier or a witch card things like that is it an uh, is it a deck FDK where the cards we're using are runic sorts of cards where we de deplete our opponent's deck? Okay, so this is where the offense enabler comes in. What sort of offense are you going to be putting on the field, either you or your opponent, that has come from your play starter that facilitates this FDK? What is the mode or status of your FTK is it burn? If it's a burn card, what is it? Is it a is it a repeatable burn card like a cannon soldier which has no once per turn clause? Is it runic cards which allow you to banish your opponent's deck without with just reckless abandon? Whatever kind of offense 
enabler you are playing in this scenario of an FDK, whether it is burn, whether it is deck destruction, whatever it is, with the whatever purpose it is, understanding what your offense enabler is as part of your FDK is important. And it is important to realize this. And usually when constructing an FDK, the offense enablers always, almost always, and with 100%, 100% sure rate, always are not once per turn clauses. They are usually repeatable offenders, which can facilitate that FDK happening in the first place. I can't deny that. It's just the truth at this point. So remember, when constructing an FDK, your offense enabler is extremely important and must be, without fail, a repeatable offender in terms of effects. It's either a repeatable offender that has no once per turn clause, or it's a cheat system in Yu-Gi-Oh itself with the effects. It's a way of cheating mechanics out in the game that has been started with the play starter. Whatever it is, Know that the offense enabler card that you play at this point is quite important with whatever it does. And I think that's it. Let's go to the final part. And we have three known as the resource loop. Now, when performing your FDK, your play starter is pretty good, as we've talked about earlier in this video. Your Offense enabler is pretty good as well. But if you're going to seal the deal, when you use such effects, whether it is to burn or to destroy your opponent's deck, you're going to be running out of resources, right? So you're going to need to find a way to loop those resources back to the beginning, like a videotape recorder, so that you can repeat the process all over again. This is known as the resource loop. And FTKs all have what I like to call a resource loop. And you need to find the resource loop in yourself. One of the typical examples of this is in with Firewall Dragon, whereas Firewall Dragon, when it was first printed, was was a play starter in an FDK, but also a resource loop generator, as it had both effects that could re-loop your resource that you would use to burn. What do I mean by this? For example, you would go through your place, summon cannon soldier, and then you would su and then through the image of the combo, you would put a assault core into the graveyard. So the effect of the cannon soldier would tribute while the firewall drag was on the field would tribute a assault core. A obviously Cannon Soldier would deal 500 uh, points of damage to your opponent. The effect of a of a Firewall Dragon, because a Assault Core has left the field, it would bring a Assault Core back into your hand. Thus would get it special summoned and then special summon it, which would then re-trigger re the Cannon Soldier dealing 500 and then you would be in an infinite loop. This is an example of using a resource loop to facilitate a burn FDK. And I use firewall here to perfectly illustrate how a resource loop can help you in attaining an FDK in Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, whatever kind of resource loop that you're going to be doing with the FDK that you're going to be constructing in Yu-Gi-Oh!, know this, that all FDKs in Yu-Gi-Oh! must follow these three steps. They must, one, have a play starter, two, have an offense enabler, and finally, three, have a resource loop. They need to be in a closed loop and a closed state where each and every action causes doesn't cause an opposite reaction, but causes the same reaction. It is quite different from physics, where each and every action causes an opposite reaction. In an FDK, each and every action causes the same reaction. Everything has to work in exactly the same way. Everything has to go in a perfect circle so that everything works in the exactly the same way. Hence, the loop nature of the whole entire thing. What I'm trying to say, in a, to cut a long story short, is a resource loop allows you to cheat the 
resources that you are going to lose and not really lose them in the first place. That's how an FTK functions, is that it allows you to have unlimited resources by cheating the system and cheating the effects that you have facilitated onto the field. Okay, and I think that's all I've got to say about this matter. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.